Alright, so um, here I am at home. <laughs> Gangster. And uh, it's a nice rainy day outside. Uh, actually, my field in Keao is right out there um, in the Puna region here in Onomea, South Hilo. And um, here today, um, I'm implementing an idea that I got from Chris Trump, who's been ex exceptionally successful in eliminating fungus, uh, such as Phytophthora and other common agricultural ailments in his, and disease-causing elements in his macnut orchard in Kohala. Um, and what he does is he brews an aerobic tea. So, uh, so I got this little tiny five-gallon bucket, and it's driven by a AP40 pump here, little air pump, air pump 40, which means I think 40 liters of air per minute, and um, it's bubbling here nicely. Got actually a really nice bubble going on, and at the bottom there's a six inch air stone, which I would pull up to show you, but it's uh, it's down and suction down to the bottom, and we may as well pull it up. Let's see here. Fastened down the bottom with suction cups. It's actually fastened down pretty well right now, so no sense me pulling it out of there. But it's a round air stone disc and uh, bubbling here pretty voraciously. So what I'm going to do is load into this um, some of my inputs that I've been making with um, Kim Chang, who's an expert natural farming teacher. Um, and... Uh, load them in so let me get that prepared and then I'll get this going again so uh, here's our IMO 4 collection here and uh, we brewed, brewed this over uh, 14 days and you can see the nice uh, mycelium starting to grow on here also nice chunkies here uh, as I break them apart you can really see the mycelial action happening in dirt clumps as well as the mill run that they're brewed in. So I'm going to start uh, my batch here um, with uh, just a handful of this here. So uh, putting just a handful of the IMO4 into the uh, into the bubbler there. And uh, next ingredient, I've been talking with Kim Chang about it and she said that when she makes liquid IMO4, um, one of the things she adds is IMO2. So here I got a batch of IMO2. This is the microbes caught on rice mixed with sugar. And uh, so I'm going to also just add into my five gallon bucket here just a little bit of this and to uh, mix that into the water real good. Clean my hand off a little bit. So. I got microbes in there, oh, and uh, now the key with microbes is you can't just have workers, you also got to feed your workers, so, so it's a two-part thing. Um, so the other thing I'm going to add into here is the maintenance solution. This is the oriental herbal nutrient mixed with, um, what else, um, brown rice vinegar and fermented plant juice made from banana flour. And I'm going to put 40 milliliters into this. This is a four gallon batch here that I'm making. So give the microbes all the food and medicine and the ability to um, brown rice vinegar acts as a stimulator. And another important ingredient uh, is this worm humic acid. And I'm just going to add 15 milliliters of that in there. And um, those components there should pretty much give me everything I need. Uh, the other thing I may add in is a bit of sea salt. So um, it's all in here. It's all starting to brew. Um, looks pretty simple right now. It's starting to bubble a little bit. I'm betting this is going to get so bioactive it's going to bubble over the edge and uh, create quite a mess here. So I'll do it on my. Uh, deck so that it will um, be easy to clean up and just go into my plants that are growing beneath the deck 
So I'm going to brew this for about 36 hours and then apply it, um, not tomorrow, but the following day in the afternoon and uh, mix this, dilute this into the other tanks that I got in the field. Hey, um, March 28th, 2017, out here in the papaya field. Now, made that tea earlier, but uh, went to work, worked at a school garden, it's pretty fun. Uh, but here, out here now, and my uh, down microbe solution, my anaerobic tea, simple, very rudimentary way of preparing microbes, not nearly as profound as the IMO4 Master Cho's way, but pretty simple, dirty, easy way to get it done here in the field is ready. So how do I know it's ready? Let's take a closer look. You see the bubbles in there, bubbles popping, doing their thing. Very active, very volatile, means that if I keep going, for much longer, these uh, this JMS will actually be overripe. In this tank here, even better ripe and ready. See how it's pulling away from the edge a little bit. It means it's still circulating around the inside. So this batch, perhaps even better than that other batch, that other barrel there. Um, but time for me to skim off the crap off the top. Throw my little bit more nutrients for the papaya trees in there, and then. Uh, Hook my sprayer up and get it growing, baby. And uh, tree's looking pretty nice. This tree right here, you know, hanging in there, still putting out good new, nice new fruit, still flowering. You know, I don't want to see any skips. Like a skip is something like this, where one fruit comes out and then there's no fruit above it. A skip is a sign of mismanaged nutrition but uh, my trees right in this section looking pretty good on the whole uh, this one's a little bit better more fruit coming out here coming out fruits all the way down the column leaves halfway through my fruit column which is another sign of health so ideally the leaves should be down about here a few more leaves hanging on so as I increase the nutrition and combat the fungus Hopefully that'll happen. Fungus still here, growing. Not so bad though. It's been really dry lately though. We got some rain last night, but really dry out here. So I haven't quite seen the full effects of the Puna jungle in full effect when it's raining. But check out this guy here. Nice solid fruit column. Growing. Tree's looking nice ground is mulched, grass is tall again, so if I have enough time today I will also get on the blade cutter and work the back half of the field, back third of the field is better way of saying it. So I'm uh, going to nutrient up these guys and get spraying. It's about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, sun setting, much more ideal, it's a time to spray than last time that I was out here at noon. So. Uh, We'll see how quickly I can get this done, though. It's going to get dark on me eventually. So, uh, all right. Aloha. Hey, aloha. Uh, you know, it's always fun to uh, party and to uh, have a good time, but the most important thing here today, after uh, spraying my trees out here, almost the end of the day, is to clean up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray out these barrels really well. I'm gonna purge out my pump and I'm gonna make sure any trash or anything is uh, cleaned out of this field because it always makes sense to clean up and leave it better than you found it. So uh, pretty much sprayed this barrel in its entirety and this barrel down about mm, two-thirds, I don't know, you can see on the outside the barrel, it's down, the water level's down to about here. So I think that's roughly about 75 gallons, the whole thing would be 100 gallons. 
somewhere between 75 and 80 gallons that I sprayed out here today on this block here, which is 150 by 150 feet. And um, I have no idea how many papaya trees are in here. I should probably walk through and count them or do some arithmetic to figure out how many are in here. But uh, trees looking nice. I only found one tree with, um, with some peach scale growing on the stem and uh, one tree that vines were growing up. I noticed as the trees get larger in diameter, harder for the vines to climb them. Very easy for them to climb the skinny trees in the beginning. Um, and also one tree basically that looked like it had fungus pretty bad, but the rest of them looking pretty good. You know, for the most part, uh, the leaves that were um, dying, like this tree here, uh, yeah, you can see kind of that thing hanging down right there. Most of that's gone. Um, I don't even know. This place got treated once via a tractor spraying JMS and microbes on it. But this was the first time I walked through on foot. Um, got a lot better with hose management. Figured that out. Um, but still took me uh, roughly four to six, 15. Roughly took me two hours to do this, to go through the field, look at every tree, spray it really well, make sure all the microbes are on it. Um, also spraying calfos and um, some uh, warm humic acid in addition to the maintenance spray. So fruits looking good, columns looking good. Uh, every tree that's healthy looking is loaded. And then every so often there's a trees in there that just look like this one right here behind me with like, you know, no action at all. So see if we can bring those trees back to life, see if we can revive them. Uh, had a fun day spraying, gonna clean up before the sun sets. And uh, thanks for watching, aloha.